Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you the character I've come up with in my semi-blind Diablo 4 playthrough. Now, what do I mean by a semi-blind playthrough? Well, I've never played a Diablo game before. Never. Not even once in my life. Not even at a friend's house for 10 minutes. Never. Uh, I played RP ARPGs as a kid. I play Path of Exile a ton now. But for some reason, I just never picked up Diablo. Because when I was older and getting into ARPGs again, I... I mean, Path of Exile was on the market, and I fell in love with it. And if you have followed the channel or know me, you know that I am a Path of Exile sweat. I mean, I cleared 7S7 Ubers this league. I make YouTube videos about it. I play Path of Exile a lot. And more specifically, I try really hard to be a good Path of Exile player. I practice my act times. I do build prep every league start, etc., etc. So, going into Diablo 4... I really wanted to have a new player experience. I mean, I sweat so much in Path of Exile and in games in general, I may as well come in with a new player experience with a fresh perspective and avoid being jaded like it seems like a lot of people will be on the new release of a sequel. Like for me, Call of Duty is a prime example that I'm very jaded with Call of Duty games every time they come out. So with that in mind, I have been avoiding any sort of information about this game on the internet. I have not been watching YouTube videos, going on Reddit or other social media platforms to learn about the game, despite the fact that data miners have basically figured out the whole game. There's simming tools that allow you to simulate and create builds before the game has even come out. And frankly, there are tier lists of the best builds before the game even comes out and established meta because of the sort of simulating tools and whatnot. So. This, instead, is my attempt to do it all from scratch. I have not looked up anything online. I have just tried to come up with the strongest build possible based on my experience with ARPGs, my ability to kind of learn and understand the game, and just overall, I thought this would be fun because it will show me if I am actually smart and clever, and clever at coming up with builds, and it'll be fun, I think, to come up with this and then later on, when I do start learning more about the game or watching content online or going on Reddit, whatever you would you would consider like learning about the game, it will be nice to compare what I came up with based on my own independent conclusions compared to what other people and the community come up with based on the min-maxing that they collectively do, bouncing ideas off each other, etc. So without further ado, let me just show you the build in action here. This is the level 50 capstone dungeon in World Tier 2 to unlock World Tier 3. I've already completed this, but I think it'll be a good showcase of the build in action because my character is still level 50. So hopefully that was enough for you to get a general idea of how the build 
please help. And what did I do when planning or creating this character? Well, my goal overall when I was making this build is I wanted to play a ranged character and I wanted to play a character that feels like attack damage carry in League of Legends because I really like playing AD carry or builds like AD carry in these isometric ARPG style games. So that was my goal going into this. I want to make a ranged build that feels like playing AD carry in League of Legends. And it is also a very strong build. And I think I've done an excellent job in that regard here. So what is the build? It's Penetrating Shot Rogue. The idea here is that I scale Lucky Hit Chance to Infinity and Beyond, and this powers multiple parts of the build as in turn, and then I use Shadow and Poison Imbues for AoE and Single Target, and this helps increase my damage or make me more adaptable to the situations in front of me, and overall leaves me being a very strong character. So let's get into the individual nitty gritty pieces of the build. So Lucky Hit is the main piece I scale around. It has 66% chance base on my penetrating shot right now, and I get an extra 10% for each combo point that I build up from using basic skills. It's really easy to weave like single basic skills into in between penetrating shot usage. So at minimum, I would say I have 76% Lucky Hit chance in most cases. From there, Lucky Hit scales a bunch of different things. For starters, I get a bunch of lucky of energy back from using lucky hits. So uh, because I have nearly 100% lucky hit chance, then there's about 30% chance to gain eight energy. On top of that, when I spend 100 energy, I get 15% more lucky hit chance for five percent sec for five seconds. So these two pieces in turn means that I should always have extra lucky hit chance, and I should always have extra energy to spend on more abilities. I also get AoE from Lucky Hit because every time I deal damage to a vulnerable enemy, and I do have 100% uptime on vulnerable, I'll explain in a second. Um, as a result, then I get these procs for explosions, which gives me extra AoE. On top of that, Lucky Hit chance scales my single target thanks to this poison imbue. And overall, it just scales the build in many different ways, as you're seeing. Lucky Hit just does so much for the build overall. It's the main mechanic that I scale around for this build. Next, I go to Corpse Explosion. So, Corpse Explosion happens from my Shadow Imbuement. And if you've played Path of Exile, you know Corpse Explosion is an insane mechanic in ARPGs. If you haven't played Path of Exile, basically what this means is there is a lot of small enemies in these types of games in ARPGs and when I have my shadow imbuement and I shoot them with a penetrating shot it means that I can usually one shot a little enemy when that little enemy is one shot they deal an explosion around them dealing 1100 damage as well as applying vulnerable to all enemies hit by the explosion what this means is that when I fire a penetrating shot into a pack of enemies, those big explosions that you see happen and vulnerable gets applied to any enemies that survive and it kills most small enemies. In fact, if you have a really dense stack of enemies with lots of small enemies then an elite in the middle, you will sometimes just one shot the elite through the corpse explosions. It essentially acts as a more multiplier on your hit and so this is just a really insane node. Helps my clear immensely. Next we go to the Poison Imbuement, and Poison basically gives me big single target damage over time. This is the Imbuement that I use to enhance single target versus bosses or really tanky elite monsters. So the general idea is that you want to stack combo points for really big Poison Imbuements to apply huge poison, and then when your Poison Imbuement charges are gone, you swap to Shadow Imbuement and you just spam penetrating shots for single target because of... This modifier here, which gives me 15% attack speed when I'm on low energy. So you build up combo points to big poisons. Then when you don't have your poison, it's on cooldown. You swap to shadow for the extra 1100 damage every 6 seconds. As well as to get the critical strike chance if they're injured. And overall, you just dump all your energy so that you get a bunch of attack speed. Then when you have that attack speed, you stack combo points for your poison. And it means it's a really fluid kind of like this loop for your damage rotation on bosses. My main defensive cooldown in the build is Dark Shroud. This is a temper not a temporary bonus, sorry. This is just a buff that gives me damage reduction per active shadow. So this is a little bit weak against packs of caster or ranged monsters. That is the main point where I find Dark Shroud is a bit lacking. 
but overall this is a huge defensive cooldown it gives me extra movement speed it has a chance not to consume on being hit but this gives me significant damage reduction it's the main defensive cooldown i use in this build everything else is just kind of like passive effects for more damage reduction caltrops feel like a natural movement skill for a ranged build and there's a bit of jank with how left click attack and movement works in Diablo 4 so far you can force your a uh, key to be movement only but you can't force a key to be move and interact but not your basic skill only so basically it, I have found it very valuable to go in the dungeon to show but I found it very valuable to have a movement skill where I can move backwards without needing to move my cursor because I'm not playing on controller, I'm using mouse and keyboard, and as a result, I don't want to have to whip my cursor back every time I want to dash away. What I can instead do is I can be attacking over here, and then just press E, and then I have a way to move backwards. So this has been really nice. Longer term, maybe I'll swap to dash, because it is just overall a really good movement skill. But for right now, Caltrops are doing the trick for me. They also do an extremely underrated amount of damage. Like, these hit hard, especially when they crit. So, overall, a nice skill. Next up, my basic skill, bread and butter skill, your generator. And this, for me, is just a way to apply vulnerable. That's essentially the whole purpose of this. It has some lucky hit chance. Yes, it generates some energy, but really this is to apply vulnerable to targets. And it's a very good at doing that. For single target instances, I basically always have vulnerable up because I can just, I'm permanently using this to get charge, get energy per penetrating shot. So as a result, in single target boss encounters, I have 100% uptime on vulnerable. And in AoE encounters, I have 100% uptime on vulnerable because of corpse explosions with shadow impediment applying vulnerable. So basically everything is always vulnerable. And as a result, that helps my damage immensely too. And it helps me with some of my procs as well. Now, piercing shots do need some combo points to reliably get the 100% lucky hit chance. So in general, you might have seen with my gameplay there, you want to do a penetrating shot and then weave it with one forceful arrow and then do another penetrating shot. That gives you a combo point, extra 10% lucky hit and some extra damage. And it will also ensure that you're stacking vulnerable on the target for single target fights. So that's how the actual skills work together. Let's start talking about legendary items and how they affect it. So I'll start at the bow and then go top down, left to right. So my trick shot bow, this is an item that I've got from World Tier 3. This is, I will admit, definitely carrying my damage a bit because this is really high item level for a level 50 character. But the imprint that I have here is my penetrating shot split. So you might have seen in my gameplay whenever I shoot my penetrating shot, actually maybe it'll work on this barrel, it splits off into a T, and those two projectiles that go in that T shape, they do less damage, and admittedly, maybe I don't need this legendary effect to be on my two-hander, because it gets double effect from my two-hander, so it's 20% damage instead of 10 here, but I think maybe I will not need this longer term, because really the main value of this is to apply my imbuements to more targets, because my imbuements are really where a lot of my damage comes from. But that split means that I have better AoE, and it doesn't feel quite as janky as a skill because I don't have extra projectiles, so shooting a single arrow can sometimes feel tough on fast-moving targets. Next up is my helmet, and this is just a defensive cooldown overall. It gives me damage reduction when I'm using basic skills. So this has basically 100% uptime against bosses for the damage reduction. Against big packs of enemies and in mapping scenarios, this is definitely weaker because I'm mostly using penetrating shot. But the overall goal of this build is to be one-shotting screens besides elite enemies, so in theory, not as big of a deal. My body armor, Victimize, is the passive, my key passive. So this is getting the proc chance for a little AoE explosion on enemies that are vulnerable. And this just ends up being a huge amount of sustain for my character because I have nearly 100% lucky hit chance on most of my penetrating shots. So as a result, I have a very high chance to get this uh, victimized proc. Like it's basically 30% chance to do the victimized skill. And then in turn, that victimized explosion heals me. So this is really good sustain unless I need to use a potion because I'm going to get one shot on a boss. This basically heals me through any chip damage. During mapping, sometimes you'll just heal to full health when you shoot a pack. Um, it's a really good sustain legendary power. 
Next is my gloves, and this gives me stronger imbue effect against vulnerable enemies. Again, I have a lot of vulnerable uptime, gives me big imbuements, so more single target poison damage, more AoE corpse explosion, you know the vibes. Lucky hit here, so critical strikes with my marksman skills, so in this case my core ability and my basic ability. Those critical strikes have a chance to give me a dark shroud. Now this is lucky hit with crit, so admittedly the proc chance is not very good here. But I think this is one that's going to scale longer term. Like as I get better gear, this is just going to get better and better and better. And the perfect goal is that long term, I would like to get to the point where I can unbind Dark Shroud. Because I'm finding keybinds really limited in the game so far. I wish I had basically another two to three keybinds at any given point. So perfect world longer term. If I can get enough procs of this legendary power, then I can swap out Dark Shroud for either another movement skill or an ultimate ability. To be determined, but that's the vision here. Next is the boots. Dealing direct damage to a vulnerable enemy has a chance to daze them for two seconds. This is basically the crowd control I have in my build. Other than the slow on my Caltrops, this is the only crowd control that I have, but it's a very powerful crowd control because I have such high lucky hit chance to the point where I will often just basically daze lock enemies when I am comboing penetrating shots on them. It's a really strong power. It means I don't get overwhelmed, especially as I've recently moved up to world tier three. So this is just really how I stay alive as the character and make sure that during solo play, I don't get overwhelmed by enemies. My amulet legendary power, making an enemy vulnerable has a chance to give me critical strike chance. So this admittedly should be replaced with something else, but I'm low on crafting materials, so I can't just craft myself a really good legendary amulet instead. But this item basically is just more critical strike chance. It scales my damage. Again, the amulet slot is very valuable for legendary powers because of the 50% boost. So longer term, I will be taking this legendary power and putting it on my amulet because it's so powerful for my build, but I'll talk about that more later. Overall, it's just a nice damage increase right now. Next, I have a unique ring that gives me, if a core skill hits five enemies, so my penetrating shot, I get most of the, I get 40% of the energy cost back. So this just makes it so when I am not doing bosses, just running around shooting packs of enemies, if I'm hitting five or more enemies, it basically means that I can have permanent uptime on my penetrating shot because of this the lucky hit procs for energy back as well as my other legendary power which is on my rings which is killing a vulnerable enemy grants, grants me energy regeneration for four seconds so between all those mechanics if i am one shotting or even just shooting packs of five of more enemies when going through dungeons i basically have 100 percent energy uptime for penetrating shots which is obviously a huge damage increase and a huge clear increase because it has more aoe than forceful arrow admittedly this might be overkill and i could probably get away with replacing this with another ring instead but it has the unique item effect of being a higher rarity and basically as a result i like it as i talked about this ring gives me some extra energy sustained by shooting vulnerable enemies i always have vulnerable you know the vibe Next is the weapons, my one-handers. So here I have an imprint for basic skills give me attack speed, or basic skills have extra attack speed, excuse me. And the idea here is just that it makes weaving the forceful arrows in between penetrating shot a bit smoother, as well as it means that I spend less time doing basic abilities because I do absolutely need to do them for single target to maintain energy on... Um, bosses as well as to get combo points for big poisons so if i'm going to need to do basic attacks and that's been my experience so far that even if you can get enough energy sustained to not need to do basic attacks you still kind of need to do them for applying vulnerable or just for getting your combo points so as a result i figure it's good to have some attack speed on this maybe a mid maxer will disagree and say you can unbind a basic ability get rid of this what are you doing but that will be to be determined later Next, it's the last uh, legendary power I have here, and this is that basic skills give core skill damage. Again, this is a multiplier for my poisons in single target, or just for my damage in general, if I'm doing the one uh, basic skill into penetrating shot weaving I'm talking about. So this is just another way to increase my damage overall. I would maybe put this on my necklace even longer term. That or this imbuements have increased effect against vulnerable enemies because this is an insane multiplier, but to be determined longer term. Now, keep in mind with this build and everything that I've shown here today is that 
I all the decisions around this build are based on the gear that I've been able to find through drops or the legendary powers available in the codex list. So there are probably some insane effects that I'm missing out on right now that people are furiously typing comments about and they haven't even gotten to this point of the video for the disclaimer because they're so upset it was not included in the build. Don't worry, I'm aware of it. That's part of the fun of this blind playthrough is learning the game as new things come out. It gives a lot of excitement to the game. And if you stick around, I will post a video when I'm a level 100 Giga Chad with a fully optimized character when I've basically figured out the game and all the options. And I will show you the this character archetype at its absolute strongest at that point. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're planning to play this build or if you're excited about the thought of playing this build. Let me know if you think this build is actually strong or if stuff on the internet is just completely slapping it around in terms of power. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Take care.